invested in all kinds of verticals within the transportation industry, looking at autonomous vehicles, even flying taxis, with the boring company, with tunneling. Which one is most likely uh, to come to fruition first? That's a really interesting question, right? I think that you obviously have government regulation that plays a factor in all these, right? If you think about the whole like VTOL space, right, you have these incredible new methods of transportation, which takes off like a helicopter and then basically rotates and can fly like a plane and can actually change the way that people think about where they live and how they work. While there's a clear path with the technology, a lot of things have to do with dealing with uh, government groups like the FAA or whoever it may be. The interesting thing about Boom Supersonic, which is a um, portfolio company of ours that is building a modern day supersonic jet um, is that we've been supersonic since the late 1960s, if you think about the Concorde, right? And they've gone in and they fixed a lot of the problems that were that was on the Concorde, but because there are these supersonic corridors over the oceans between New York and London, between LA and Tokyo, there, 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 there is much less that you have to do in terms of working with the FAA to have these routes. Well, you, of course, have to have the actual aircraft certified and go through all this testing, there's less to do in terms of a new type of uh, actual airplane. But specifically looking at the supersonic jets, what specifically is different from when we saw the Concorde, as you mentioned, come to market to today to ensure that something like this will be successful? Because we're living in a time now where it seems to be far more scrutinized when any new technology comes to market. If you look at three core things that have changed between then and now, right? You've had Boeing and Airbus basically lobby to get the use of carbon composites used, right? So you can now build this aircraft out of a ton of different pieces uh, of carbon fiber that makes that cuts the weight in a huge way. And then if you look at the fact that you can actually operate a wind tunnel with software, right? That's a huge thing as well. It saves massive costs. And the third is that they've basically taken the first class cabin of an airplane and made it supersonic, right? Well, if you were to go on a Concorde, it wasn't a comfortable flight from everything that I've read. They basically made the first class cabin supersonic, which is the part of the aircraft that pays for the current flights anyway. So it's targeting the right demographic with people that are actually willing to spend this kind of money. So they rethought the business model as well. Congestion on our roads is a big problem. So we're seeing companies like the Boring Company look to tunnel underground. Why is this uh, a lucrative opportunity and investment for you? Because it, it is very expensive to, to burrow underground. If you can burrow tunnels under places like LA or let's say you go to places like Bogota, Colombia, right, where it takes people hours and hours and hours to get across this tiny little range of mountains because there's no road. If you could just burrow through that, I mean, you could basically change the way that people live in these cities, right? You can change how they get from point A to point B. And then if you partner that over time with, you know, things like self-driving cars or shared cars or whatever it may be, it creates a massive pain of like efficiency in all these uh, larger metropolitan cities that haven't really had this before because they weren't built to be this scale. And so where we currently stand today, where do you see the biggest opportunity for investment in the transportation industry? I see it in trucking and logistics and overall supply chain. I think that it's such a big, it, it, it's such a high volume business. If you look at most companies, almost every physical company has a logistics component to it. Think about grocery stores, think about Nike, think about any of these companies, right? They're basically just like logistics companies, almost wrapped with something else, right? So whoever can get things fastest and cheapest uh, is gonna win that game.